Oh, welcome back my friends for another fun reloading video. Today we're continuing our Q&A series here with our first question. This is kind of a part two on how to set up your dies. This was uh, asked over on Rumble from a user. He said, hey, I'm a total noob. All I ever see in these videos is people pulling the handle and the bullet comes out, but you never show me how to set it up. So we're gonna basically give you a rundown on the different types of neck expansion in this video, different ways you can expand your case to achieve different neck tension or sufficient flare, so on and so forth. So we're gonna get into that right now. So most often, more often than not, if you think of flaring your case, it's gonna be in the context of a pistol round, right? Most of them are straight walled and you need to expand your case mouth to get that bullet to fit in there without shaving off any of your lead, your powder coating, your copper plating, your jacket even. But here's an example of not having enough expansion. You can see it has scraped off the powder coat and now we have exposed lead, which defeats the point of the powder coat. And this is not an ideal situation here. There are several types of expanding dies. We have a mandrel style. So we have a Lee die, which is a powder through an expanding die. And then I have a Lee universal expanding die. So let's jump into these here. A mandrel, while not always used for pistol, these are often used for sort of a precision rifle if you need a very specific neck tension that you've dialed in with your brass and your load and so on and so forth. If you're neck sizing a rifle case, you can have it so you don't have an expander come back out through the neck when you're raising it back out of the ram. Thus, you can set your neck tension with another die and you'd be using a mandrel for that. So this one came with the 350 Legend die set so it's usually gonna be a couple thousandth smaller than your bullet diameter. And that's how you would measure your neck tension is how many thousandths you have in difference between your mandrel and your bullet diameter. So that's an example of a mandrel and when you would be using that. Some companies make a kit where it has just a die body and then you can get several different expanding mandrels. Maybe you'll get a kit for your 6.5 Creedmoor or whatever and that's like, uh, you know, a 264 diameter, I believe. So it would send you a kit with a couple different thousandths or even half thousandths increments around that. So you could play with your neck tension and perhaps get the best fit for your gun. So our next one is an RCBS die. It's similar in design, sort of a mandrel style again. This one's for a uh, 45 long Colt. You can see that this would just go up into your case mouth and make this nice uniform pocket for your bullet to sit in and then once it gets to this part here then it'll barely flare out your mouth so you have a nice bell to sit your projectile onto and that'll help with seating a whole lot next we have lee's little entry here this is a powder through expanding die so we can see on this end or i don't know if you can see it inside is a little expanding plug with a hole through it and up top we have an insert where you can either attach a uh, powder measure or you can put a funnel on here now i don't have a specific leaf funnel but you, theirs fits perfectly and you can throw your powder right through here when you have your bullet raised up through the ram and that way you can flare and throw your powder at the same time and that will save you a step there take a look inside here I know the die says 350 Legend, but I think they just make a standard die body and then you get different uh, inserts depending on your cartridge. So if this were, you know, a shorter case, they would have a longer insert to get to here to uh, expand whatever case you were on. So anyways, that's a powder through expanding die. And while we're at powder through expanding die things, this is for a Dillon 550, and this is actually their powder funnel, they call it. So they have this die that you use on your second stage, and then you get a different funnel depending on your conversion kit. So this one's for 9mm, obviously. And as you can see, 
This is where it's expanding our mouth and also dumping our powder. So for the 9mm and the Dillon, that is their F funnel. And they have a chart, so it'll say like funnel A uses these cartridges, funnel B, so on and so forth. F, I guess, works for 9mm and cases approximately that length. That's just another example of a powder through die. And lastly, we have a Lee Universal Expander here. So how this works, inside, we actually have two different plugs. And between the two different combinations you can make between, you know, this diameter facing down with this one facing up, that'll give you certain case combinations you can use. Turn this this way, it'll shorten this, so you have a different set of cases. And then you turn them both around, there's two more combinations. So you can use this for pretty much every single case. But today I'm gonna show you real quick how to set up a 38 special case. So I believe we're gonna use this big expander here and then we'll put this guy this way. Nope, turn him around. And now I'll show you how to install this and use it. And although this is a universal die, the directions are pretty similar for every single way you're gonna be expanding your neck. Okay, so we have our shell holder installed. I have a piece that's already been properly flared and you'll see how easily this bullet kind of sits on top here where this would aid in seating as well as not scrape off any more powder coating. So this is where we wanna to get to, but we're gonna be starting with a fresh case here and obviously it's pretty much the same diameter as the bullet so that's going to be cutting off some of our powder coating or lead or plating or jacketing so we have our shell plate in and i'm going to take our new case actually and get that installed and then i'm going to actually run this to the top now i have my stem here installed about halfway down through the threads just so it's not hanging out and i'm just going to kind of bring the body into it and I'll feel it hit the case mouth here soon. There it is, we've made contact, and now I'm going to tighten the lock ring, because we're pretty close with our body die. So if I back my handle off, and then here I give it maybe a quarter turn just to see what happens, we can run that back in, and I can feel a little bit of pressure. I know this isn't enough, but it'll get us started. And now you can see that we're actually able to get that a little further in there. But from experience, I know that that's still way too tight and the case mouth is going to still be taking off some material. Try it again after maybe another eighth of a turn. Getting better, still pretty, uh, pretty close. And it's gonna be different for every projectile, but here, you can see we have enough tension to still hold the bullet. It's not flopping around. It's not going to fall out. And that's actually pretty good in most situations. But I don't want to take any chances with my powder coating. So I'm going to uh, just give it another little bump there. Run it one last time. And I think this would probably be suitable. So that's how we set up our die, and as we can see, this is the one on the left that we just did. The one on the right was kind of the example I was using, which some people would say it could be a little bit overexpanded. And it's all sort of personal preference, and really, uh, you're only, I'm only really overworking my case mouth. So if you can get away with less, that is always better. But I want to err on the side of caution because I'm on a progressive and so on and so forth. An example of too much expansion you can see here. Uh, this is actually a 357 case that I was running with my 38 specials, so the die was set up for that. And as you can see, this is obviously way, way too much expansion. But yes, look how you know flexible the brass is. It hasn't cracked at all. And if I could actually get this back into the sizing die, we could save it. And reuse it of course but again way too much expansion here definitely not needed but that's going to bring me into the next point i've got 
And my next point here is about how case length is going to change the amount of flare you're getting from your die setting. Because in your press, your die is set to a static length. It's not moving at all if you have it locked in properly and it's all set up and good to go. But what can change is your case length. And if you're just using miscellaneous range brass, unknown origin, unknown amount of times fired, um, some are gonna be longer, some are gonna be shorter. That's just how it is. And if you've ran into Hornady 357 Magnum cases, their FTX ones, they cut them like, you know, an eighth of an inch shorter because that's how they do that load for whatever reason. So you could get screwed over that way and not even expand out that mouth, try to set a bullet on it and try and seat it and you're gonna run into some problems there. So that's one thing you're gonna to have to watch out is your case length. And I know a lot of people say they're never gonna trim their pistol cases, but I like to with my rimmed pistol cases at least. So my 38s, 357, uh, 45 Colt, so on and so forth. I like to have those nice and prepped and uniform. That way, with the cases the same length, I get the same amount of expansion on every single case, and then I get the same amount of crimp on every single case because those are all set on how deep your die is into the press. And if you're changing your case length, you're gonna be changing that setting, essentially. Furthermore, just a couple other things you can measure if you're into that. You can measure the amount of expansion you have. So we'll measure this case mouth here. We'll say this one is expanded at about 393 or so. And then we can see this one is expanded at way down at 377. So obviously it's something you can measure, but if you're trying to set up your die and all this and your cases are a different length, it's going to be very difficult. So, you know, if this one was longer than this one, it goes further up onto the expander. Thus it gets opened up more and you're going to have a bad day. Okay. So there we go. That's sort of a, I'll go here, sort of a long winded explanation on how to set up your expanding die and some of the different types of expanding dies you might run into and also why it's important to be expanding or not to certain degrees. So I'm trying to make these Q&A things shorter than a regular uh, expedition to the Arctic. But if I get long-winded, I'm sorry. Sometimes I try to throw in extra information for uh, the noobs because he specifically said, I'm a total noob. I don't know anything. So I hope it's not overwhelming, but I hope this is also a good sort of introduction to how you can do it with a universal type and other options out there. So if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try and add it to my list of Q and A things I'm working through because it's kind of fun actually, you know, giving you guys answers and helping you guys with problems you might have or can't find information on. So I'm just kind of helping out where we can. So let me know what you want to know about, whether it could be load development or where to find a load or how to find a load for a powder you don't have data for or can't find, so on and so forth. Let me know. I'll try and help you out or make a shorter video about it if I can. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this sort of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Head on over to Rumble, subscribe over there. We've got an Instagram you can check out. There's a Patreon if you like to support the channel that way. And you can also find me on my own site. That is dummyroundreloading.com. There I'm trying to add in sort of blog posts and articles to go along with some of my videos. So anyways, thank you very much for hanging out. We will see you in the next video. Have a good one.